Welcome to Anderson Penn Sunday Brunch Menu 14 for Sunday, August 7th, 2022. I'm Eric. Here's Brian. Nice to see you again. We Good morning. We haven't been here for quite some time. No, that's right. Um, uh, was it Justin's fault? Oh, uh, well, he did have a day off. He yes, there was, there was a vacation yeah, involved. There was a vacation yep, involved. Yep, yep. And he went away, he had a good time, supposedly. He's I, camping. I heard, I heard there were tents. No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's Steph. <laughs> Just an Airbnb. <laughs> Steph will go camping. However, I did hear something about kayaking. So there was water involved. Okay, somewhere. great, great. Um, but Justin's back and we're back. Um, had a nice ride this morning. We did, yes. Went yep. uh, uh, on a road we like, but we took it further than we usually do. And then... Something extraordinary happened because ordinarily we will go for a ride and then go to Copper Rock because Mr. Anderson loves his scones. But a dream of Brian's has always been to get there early enough to get a warm one yes. right out of the oven. Yes. How warm was this scone? This scone was so hot. I, we, I couldn't, I had to carry it by the bag because they put them in little bags and I had to carry it by the bag because it was too hot. To yes, yeah, because I got one too. Yeah. And that was too hot. It was, it was very hot. It was amazing. But so you were very satisfied. A lifelong dream fulfilled. Uh, that's because we left a little earlier than usual for a Sunday. Uh, yes. So we got to Copper Rock 10 minutes after they opened. So that's the time. Sunday, that Sunday is the time. mornings at 7 Sunday 10. morning. Uh, today, of course, is August 7th. And I've already said it's nice to be back tomorrow, August 8th. International Cat Day. Oh. International Cat wow. Day. International Cat Day was created in 2002 by International Fund for Animal Welfare. Tell me if you agree with this. You own two cats, right? <laughs> yes, cats, at the moment. Cats provide companionship and comfort to many. Studies show having a cat can help to lower stress, anxiety, and even depression. Having a cat in your home can also help reduce the risk of heart disease in high-risk individuals. Uh, it can even help fight mental illness. Well, in your case, that's absolutely true. Because Fighting mental illness. You are mentally fit, so <laughs> I'm going to blame the cats for that. It's mostly stress-free with cats. Mostly stress-free. So, but you enjoy having cats. Yes. Yeah. And you've got two. Didn't go for the third I didn't, one. I did not get the third one last month. So happy, I guess that's how you celebrate. Happy International happy Cat International Day. You cat. should probably adopt a cat. That'd be a good day tomorrow. <laughs> we'll go. Okay. We'll go. Right. Um. Watches, got to see your watch. <laughs> well, this isn't actually even. This isn't even my watch. So it's on your wrist. It's. Uh, I, I vowed I would never, never ever have oh. one. Um, I still can't use it right. Uh, but uh, what, what is that? Is er, that er, er, Eric lent me his iPhone? Oh, his iPhone. It's or called his an Apple, Apple watch. watch. <laughs> see, I don't even know what it's called. I've been using it for. <laughs> but there's three a good days, reason. Five there's days. A good reason. I, I mean, I keep. Uh, when we go for a ride, this is the, the, the watch face I use because okay. it has things that I, the, the apps that I use while we ride. Okay, so that looks different than mine. So And, and this is the one I usually use during the day okay. because it tells me the information. How hot is it? 81 degrees. See? Um, and <laughs> it's I, I like it's never able, 81 when we go riding. <laughs> I like being able to switch between watch faces. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm just kind of getting used to it. I, I'm gonna I imagine you're going to disappoint quite a few people. Because you've had the luxury watches. Uh, I've had a few. Yeah. Yeah. Well, comparatively speaking, <clears throat> this is just an Apple Watch. But it comes in handy. It, it does come in handy. Yes. You've been using it for a little while about a, now. About a week. Yeah. And it comes in handy. It comes in handy. So, uh, good, 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 good. Um, I have to remind you to please like this video and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And then I'm going to ask Mr. Anderson if he has a joke. As if he doesn't have a joke. It's right there. Ask Brian if he has a joke. You what a joke? Ha what happens when a rainbow goes bad? What? It gets sent to prism. Prism. They say it's a light a sentence. A light sentence. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Anderson. That, that, was, that was courtesy of Mrs. Anderson. Oh, that was Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> oh, we morning. were supposed to mention that. She, she called she, me specifically to tell me this joke and then hung up. <laughs> But then she <laughs> called me and said, you make sure he gives me credit. So there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I just didn't know which joke it was. Why, Mr. An Anderson, should the number 288 never be mentioned? Because it's two times tall scare. I don't know. It's too gross. Too gross. Oh, let's too see. Gross. I, was, I, was, you were almost I was almost there. Almost there. <laughs> too it's gross. too gross. Okay. Did you bring a pen? Uh, I, I see I a pen. I did bring a pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I probably have shown this before, but... Uh, uh, this uh, is, it looks like a sailor. 
The Sailor King of Pen. It looks like a King of Pen. It looks sparkly. A Blue Dawn. Blue Dawn. 21 carats uh, gold nib. This is the, the limited edition. Yeah, with that nib. With that special, that nib, special nib. Special engraving on there. Gorgeous. Uh, we don't have any more of the, the King of Pens left. Uh, and this one is serial number one. That's why you got it. That's why I gotcha. got it. Uh, but we do have in, we do have the full that. the full size uh, uh, pro gears. We still have some of those in stock. But what a love! It's just a lovely pen. Uh, it has a little sparkle. It's got some sparkle to it. Yeah, just enough to be not to be. Yeah, it's not it's not obvious. It's subtle, subtle yeah. sparkle. Yeah, yeah. That's well, right. especially we have the good lights for that. Mm -hmm. Good lights for subtle sparkle. Beautiful. So. That's and my it, pen. This is what that wrote. And that's what that is. Yeah. That's, so what nib did you get? Uh, you know, I didn't even look. It, it was a medium. Yeah. So I think it was only it was, available in like fine medium. Well, when, uh, when when I saw serial number one, I didn't care if it was a medium or yeah, a broad. When I saw really it, I said, oh, so. Brian's keeping it. Brian's keeping it. Yeah. I brought a red pen and it is uh, a Mont Blanc red pen. Okay. It is uh, the Lamy Safari of Mont Blanc. <laughs> It is a plastic. Well, Mark, uh, Mark Newsom. It is yes, and it's a red, precious resin. Um, I, I I just thought the snap cap was nice. Plus, plus it has a, a magnetic feature. Mm -hmm. It's a magnetic. Yeah. And it only goes on one way. Yep. So if you try to put it on the wrong way, it just it flips, flips itself around. Which is pretty cool. Which is you know if that's what you like in your pens, then this is the pen for you. <laughs> uh, but I thought it was different. Yep. And they don't just come in this red plastic. They they make them in metal. Um, stainless steel and or couple, maybe titanium I don't know the metal ones are very very expensive not that this one's cheap but they're very cool um, so I got that one year at the Philadelphia Pen Show from Jimmy Dolife Jimmy 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 yep. usually has some things on his table that, that nobody else has that nobody else has although these are still available in red yeah mm, okay um, and it looks even got the Lamy Safari nib on it so uh, it looks like an ion nib yeah. I wonder if, you, if we take that off and put an eye on it. We should we, try that. We won't do that on camera. <laughs> Next week, Next week. <laughs> menu 15, we'll swap out an eye on nib in a Mont Blanc. I have a quiz. Or put a Mont Blanc nib in a eye on. Ooh. Okay, we'll try it. <laughs> we'll try it. He's just trying to get out of his quiz. Are you ready? I'm ready. We are playing for a sample for Justin. Justin, all right. Of my most recent <clears throat> Ink of the Week, Herbon Cacao du Brésil, which everybody loves. It's a nice color. It's a very nice color. You introduced me to that color. Uh, yeah. yeah. But and, and I had forgotten about it. And how I said, many years ago was it? Eight years ago? When did that come out, that pen? The Twisby Micarta. That was at least eight years ago. Ooh, that was we before, before we had this. Ago. Probably ten years before we'll we had the store. ten years ago. Yep. 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 As always, three questions. You have to get at least two right okay. for Justin to win this little sample here. Uh, <clears throat> and you just have to think about this one. Okay. What will Steph's next purchase at Anderson Pens be? And I have some hints for you if okay. you need them. You can okay. ask for hints, unless you know it. Oh, you know, she said this the other day. You only get one When she hints. was here. Well, if you're going to give me hints, give me hints. You said First, you said all I had to do was think. You, you, you didn't say I had to out. give an answer. You know, Steph. What did she say she wanted? It's something that's coming soon. Well, we can't talk about those. Hobonichi. She wants a Hobonichi. But that won't be her next purchase. Oh, well, uh, I'll be buying one, too. You'll be buying one, too. And you'll be buying two. Oh, uh -huh. yes, the cat calendar. The, the lucky cat the calendar. lucky cat yeah, calendar. We're yes, all waiting yes, for that one. Yes, uh, I don't know if I'm going to give that to you or not. We'll see how you do on the next two. Okay. I'm probably going to have to give it to you because the third one is hard. Um Pilot, this is number two. Okay. Pilot recently announced that they will be bringing eight new nib options to uh, for the Custom Heritage 912 to the U.S. Yes. Um, uh, this will bring the total number of nib options for the 912 to 15. Can you name them all? Uh, all right. Uh, extra fine. Check. Fine. Uh huh. Fine medium. Uh huh. Medium. Uh huh. Broad. Yep. Double broad. Yep. C. That's coarse. Coarse. coarse yep. Um, soft fine. Uh, soft fine. Soft fine medium. Soft fine medium. Soft medium. Soft medium. F A. Falcon. Yep. Waverly. Waverly. P O. Posting. Posting. 
Stub. And? Music. There you go. I should give you the sample just for that. That was good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that's a lot of nibs to keep track of. That's a lot of nibs. But if anyone can do it, Mr. Anderson can. Um, so we're just going to say already. Justin right. got this, it. This, one's, this next one's <clears throat> too hard. This, if you guess it, if you get it, it's going to be. I've gotten the third, third yes, one several have. times. Okay. Yes. Residents of Danville, Illinois. I'm not going to get this one. <laughs> recently received, and I'm talking like last week, recently received an odd warning from county animal control officials. The warning said that residents should keep away from four escaped animals should they happen to see them, that the animals can be dangerous. What were these animals? Monkeys. No. Oh, really? Okay. Because there was, I, 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 I think recently there was a... In Danville? What's well, going well, on there, in there Danville? Was, there was something, I don't know where Danville is, but there was, there was, there was a story about... A zoo in the Illinois area where like some monkeys got out. That does ring a bell. I don't remember where it um, was, but because I remember seeing it on the uh, if you have the Citizen app, it'll which tell I you. I don't. Yeah. It, it'll tell <laughs> I you don't there's, want there's to something. Know that yeah. much. So it's, it's not monkeys, but not monkeys. Uh, uh, I bear. No emus. Emus. They escaped from an emu ranch. An emu uh, ranch. <laughs> the emus. <laughs> were seen chasing people in Danville on Thursday evening. I want video of that. <laughs> and one of the animals was spotted near the Danville Mall late Friday morning. So doing a little Did they, did they get how many emus? Something? Three? Emus? Four. Four. Four emus escaped. Did they get them back? That I don't know. The, the article they're, didn't go that far. They the, left out the, the most emu vital... The farmer said he suspects that kids damaged the fence, which allowed the emus to escape. <laughs> Okay. I just thought that was funny. Okay, so for Justin. Justin gets for the, Justin. the same. Actually. I have uh, brought with me, uh, do you remember our last uh, Sunday brunch? No. <laughs> <laughs> then let me refresh your memory. It was quite some time ago. We uh, swapped Lamy nibs. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we talked about uh, uh, how to prepare for a visit to the pen store mm -hmm. and what to do when you get there. And we, I actually had some people come into the store who said they had watched... They had a backpack with their paper and... So it helped. I had several it people who come in and say, I, yeah. Uh, well, I have chosen uh, uh, some comments from underneath that, that particular video, which was Sunday Brunch 13. A uh, general comment from Eric Schroeder. Remember, we had been gone a couple of weeks prior to 13, and mm -hmm. then we were gone a couple of weeks after 13. Eric says, missed you guys. Good topics and bad jokes. Just what I needed. Yeah, that's... This is, right? <laughs> Wait till later. <laughs> uh, yeah. Made by Dawn. Question for Brian. Uh, what got you into fountain pens? And a follow-up question is why Estabrook? Uh, you have the floor. Uh, fountain pens. What got me into fountain pens? You know, um, my first recollection of a fountain pen actually was uh, um, this this cheesy little ad that came with my, my bank's um, checks. And then they had a little thing there that said, well, you know, you can, you, if you fill this out and send this in, we'll send you a free pen. And I don't think you even know this story, but it, it was, it was, a, it was a, a terrible, terrible, terrible fountain pen. It was some international cartridge, cheap, cheap, crazy thing. And then from then on, I decided, well, I, I was into antiques and I went to an antique store and I found a fountain pen, uh, which I promptly broke on the way home. Uh, from the antique store. From the antique store. Uh, and then, so I went back and I talked to the uh, the antique dealer. I said, I said, well, you know, do you know whose booth that was? Because he had other pens. And so I called him because he had other pens. I thought maybe he might have parts. Uh, we ended up talking on the phone for quite a while. And I, I want to say uh, at the time he told me he had a mint in the box, Parker 51. He would sell to me for $25 if I wanted it. Uh, of course, this is why you're into fountain pens. Of course, of course at, the, at the time, $25 was a lot of money. Uh, and what then, year was this? This was 1997, maybe, 96, okay. 97. Uh, and so uh, I declined the offer, but he gave me good information. Uh, and uh, I started buying, uh, I, I discovered eBay. And then I found... Found your wife? I found my wife. <laughs> uh, I actually started out by collecting Schaefer's. Oh, uh, but then uh, quickly realized that Estherbrooks are pretty and come and in different colors inexpensive. and inexpensive. And I was blown away by the fact that I could take them apart, take the nib out, clean it, 
Uh, and uh, the rest is history. The rest history. is history. Yeah. Does, he, does he still have that Parker 51? I, uh, well, if he does, it's probably not $25 anymore. So, well, thank you, thank you. Uh, regarding the Lamy nib swaps, uh, Brian Farrell says, is the Lamy gold nib worth the investment? And I'll answer it first, and then we'll ask Mr. Anderson his opinion. I like gold nibs, mm -hmm. at, but that's really a personal choice because um, you can easily, that's a lot of money to put on an inexpensive pen. Yes. Um, yeah. Although I had two people in the last week who were interested in putting a gold nib on an all-star. And I thought, you know, when we kind of talked it out, I, I, one person I kind of I kind of chuckled a little bit. She says, "Well, you know, it's you put a hundred dollar nib on a thirty dollar pen, you get a hundred and fifty dollar gold nib pen." True. I said, "Well, you know, gold nibs are expensive, yeah. and they're always yeah. a, a good chunk of the cost of a <clears throat> pen if it comes with a gold yes. a gold nib." Yeah. So, um, I like I like the Lamy gold nibs. I think they're nice. They have a little bit of uh, responsiveness to them. They're not soft, but they. I would say try one. Yeah. To see if yeah. you can tell how much is a gold nib, not Lamy gold nib. Uh, but on its own, I think it's, I don't remember the price. I want to say it's it's pushing a hundred bucks. Approximately a hundred dollars. Yeah. It would have to be a hundred dollar difference from from the, the if, steel one that you get. Yeah. If you're not buying uh, like a, a right. studio or something that has one, you know. A Lamy 2000 already has a yes. gold nib. Um, I, don't, I don't own a single safari that, that I have put a gold nib on. But I would want to. <laughs> I think I'm, I might have a spare gold nib line around. We should try that. I, I, I like the idea. Uh, regarding visiting a pen store, Marilyn Gardner. Uh, you might remember Marilyn Gardner as the uh, one who She's had the, the most book. notebooks. Yes. Um, what to do when visiting a pen shop is a great topic. I have had two delightful visits to Anderson Pens in Appleton, Appleton. And while I was there many hours, the time just flew by. It's kind of like you. You're here all day, but it just flies by, right? So I also recommend visiting the website before you go, which I thought was a good idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. And making a list of what you most want to see and try. But also leave a little time for browsing and being open to surprise finds. Perhaps a new notebook, she says. <laughs> <laughs> I have also done exactly what Brian suggested and retreated to Copper Rock for coffee or a snack while considering my options. It's, it's very convenient. Very convenient. Located. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, good scones. <laughs> yes. Is that what she said or no? No. Oh. No, that's what I said. <laughs> they well, are. They're amazing, I'm telling you. Uh, and it's kind of a comfortable place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you get there early enough and you get a booth, it's nice. The booths are nice. They also do have that living room area in the front mm -hmm. if you can get the couch or one of those oh, yeah, yeah, chairs. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, like had, we had pen club there once. Yeah. That was nice. It's, it's comfy. Rob McGuire says, if possible, regarding visiting a pen store, if possible, try to sit down to test a pen, which is true. It's a completely different writing experience. It's a different when you're angle. Standing at standing, a counter. Yep, yep. Uh, when you're, usually I write sitting at my desk. So that makes sense to sit down when you're going to test a pen. Also, he says, bring your favorite pen to compare what you are shopping for against a faithful known commodity. Mm -hmm. And I had not seen that before. And that's, that's a good, good that's suggestion. Good, advice. good suggestion. Good. Yeah, and, and, and here at the store, we have this table right where we're shooting right now. With chairs. With and chairs. It's always filled with paper. Yeah, it normally has our, our notebook, our testers, but yeah, you can come down here and. Yep. And, and make sense. If to you do need that. to. If you need to. Sit down and compare it to a pen that you love. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for future topics, GadgetStop321 says, please add me to the list of people who would like to see how to replace the sack on a Schaefer snorkel. Uh, and okay. I think I have a snorkel repair as next week's brunch. Yes, yeah, we can do it next week. All right, so stay tuned. Uh, as for this week, I'm going to be the customer, and you're going to explain to me all about oh. the uh, Sailor 7 Standard Nibs. Sailor 7 Seas. Um, they have extra fine, fine, uh, medium, broad, zoom, music. I'm missing one. Is there a soft medium in there? There's only seven of these. There's 15 of the <laughs> 912. Well, there's an extra fine, and there's a fine. Yes, uh, of it, course. And then there's a fine medium. A medium, a medium fine. fine. And then a medium, and then a broad, and then a zoom, and then a music. Correct. Okay, so uh, I'm 
Uh, if I were just coming into the store saying looking for a pen, don't know what nib size I want, how would you start? What do you normally write with? Uh, a fine or extra fine. In what brand? In uh, all brands. That's what I choose. Fine or extra fine. Okay. So, <laughs> so with Sailor, uh, being Japanese, and this applies to, to most Japanese pens that use Japanese nibs, because um, there are some Japanese manufacturers that don't use Japanese nibs, uh, Iboya being one of them, uh, uses Bach. Um, but uh, nibs run finer. So you're fine on your Lamy Safari, your uh, Pelican is going to write broader than right. a fine here. So if you're used to, you said fine or medium? No, extra fine. Extra fine. fine or fine. Okay. So in your case, I would search you out with a fine. And then if this, and so this is a, a what I have here is a, the tester set. These are uh, full-size uh, Pro Gears, 21 karat gold nibs on these. So now the 14 karat nibs will write, the grind is, is, is the same. And you said this is a fine. That's a fine, yeah. Now, if you're really particular, you would have your own pad of paper here. Your roadie or whatever you like to use. Yeah, but this is... This is this, this is, is a sailor, sailor tester pad. pad, yeah. All right, so I wrote this is a fine nib. Yes. Um, and what are we going to compare that to? Well, how do you and like that? It? That is, is that, a fine nib. Is that too fine? Uh, is there ever such a thing as well, too fine? Then let's go. Let's go to extra fine right away, and then we can just proceed right down the. Okay, I'll put this one above. This is an extra fine. And this goes back to even last last week when I, we were talking about writing. It's nice to be able to write extra yes. fine. Now, in this case, we're only using sailors, so you don't need to right, write. I don't need to write what sailor pro gear fine extra fine. There is a small difference here. Very small, and yep. I yep. prefer the extra fine. Okay. So far, of Sold. these two, of these two, yes, I'll take it because it doesn't I'll get any finer than I'll that. I'll take them all. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's say I wanted. Uh, let's say I didn't care for extra fine or fine. Um, you. Bump me up to a... Next, a, next up is the medium fine. Medium fine. And that is somewhere between a fine this and a medium. Somewhere between a fine and a medium, yeah. This is it, but they call it a medium, medium fine. fine. Not a fine medium like Pilot calls Ooh. it. Oh, what happened there? I, I got a broad. Yeah. This is a what? Medium fine. Medium there, fine. I think there's a hair or something in there. Yeah, I'll let, let you me, look. Let me look at that. I didn't see it, but that's what it looks like. Okay. Does that say medium fine on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's medium fine. This is a medium fine. Yeah, that's better. Whoa! There must be something going on. It's a medium fine food day. Isn't it? It's a medium <laughs> fine, and something's going on here. Okay. Know. Oh yeah, there, 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 there is a, there is a piece of. Fuzz in there. Fuzz in there, yeah, I can see it. So that's why that's... So let's try the medium. So let's try the medium. That's where we would take our brass sheet and then clean that out. And this is just a medium. That's a medium, yeah. This is a medium. Oh, see, I like that too. Yeah. Um, uh, like I like... Uh, my medium Parker Fifty One because it's put more ink. It's a decent. It's a it, decent it, medium. It's, it's a really bit, a decent it, medium. It it kind of makes it a smoother writing experience. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. this extra fine was very smooth. Yeah, it, it, it's a little of a feedback. You know, Sailor Sailor tiny bit though. Sailor has a tiny bit of feedback, and some people mistake that for for scratchy. No, it wasn't scratchy um, at all. It yeah. was nice and smooth. But of course, you're getting a lot of lubrication from the ink here, mm -hmm. so you're just mm -hmm. sliding yeah. on the yeah. page. Yeah. Uh, that was a fun writing experience. Yeah. So my favorite is the next one here. I guess we're going this, to broad. Is the broad? Yeah. Um, this is what I put on almost all. If I have a choice, that's what I put on all my pens. And that would be like your your Pelican medium almost. Wow, that put that's a lot of ink down. Yeah. So if you've got something that has some sheen, it's really going to show up. Yes. Really well with this broad. Very nice too. Very smooth. It's, they're fun to write with. Yes. I just yeah. my handwriting isn't usually large enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're pretty. I, you're pretty small. I, I have to concentrate on making things larger when mm -hmm, I'm writing mm -hmm. with 
larger nibs, but they are fun. Yeah. So, you know, I would, like I say, I always look at your, your E's, your A's and how much, um, if the loop is getting closed and you know, you're getting your D here is all closed. Yeah, it's completely so closed. It, 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 unless you were going to tell me that you were going to use this for signatures, I would, I would maybe not recommend this particular nib oh, for your, gotcha. your writing because it's, it's going to look. So uh, let's just uh, get something even broader then. <laughs> yeah. So uh, probably the, uh, the zoom here is a little bit different. It's proprietary to sailor. Uh, and this has uh, what I would, what I would call angular line variation. So uh, it, you get line variation based on the angle of the pen. So in a normal writing angle, it's a double broad. And uh, what I, I used to joke and say, uh, I, I only let you buy this pen if you fit one of three characteristics. One, you normally like a, a double broad nib. Uh, two, you're an artist. And I forget what the third one is, but uh, <laughs> you have cash. <laughs> you have cash. Uh, you don't care. But uh, we, you know, we used to get people all the time. And, oh, Zoom sounds interesting. I'll buy it. But they're an extra fine person, and oh, in a normal yeah. writing angle, this is not an extra fine. To get an extra fine, this is all based on angle. So the higher up you hold the pen, the finer the line. The finer the line. Uh huh. Okay. And oh. as you bring it down, it was like a paintbrush there. Yeah. Yeah, so in your normal writing angle, it's a, it's a lovely double broad. Oh, that is a lot of ink. It is a ton this of ink. It is zoom, right? Zoom, yeah. I, I guess that the third requirement, usually what I, I would say was if you had another sailor. Because I would have people who would buy this nib first, and then it would be their first sailor, and then they would be disappointed. They would say, well... I don't really like the nib, and that's her first experience with Sailor. So I would kind of say, well, if you, you don't already have another one and you don't like broad and, and you're not an artist, this, this nib's probably not for you. And it does take a little getting used to the muscle memory of where you need to hold the pen. Yeah, so this was all the same nib. To get, to get the writing. But I would never write like this. You would never write not, like that. Not it. long yeah, term. You would never write this that way. Is, yeah. to, to play with a nib, sure. But if you don't have a use for this, well, yeah, that's that was my normal bit, writing. Position. It's a little bit more of a difficult nib to work with. But if you like putting ink on paper, this is this is the one. What music is not going to put more? This one is. I feel that this one is a little bit more generous okay. because it's a round tipping material, so your your horizontals and your verticals are, are going to be roughly the same. With the music, the music is broad. However, this really, this particular grind that Sailor does is more akin to a stub. Yeah, uh, Sailor, I might be wrong. Sailor's music nib is not, doesn't have three times. It does not have That's three times. Time yes, this is, the, this is the one example. <laughs> Platinum's got a three time. Pilot's got a three time. Uh, Franklin Christoph's got a three time. But, um, Sailor only does two. Now, I know some people, they want a three-time nib. But it's kind of interesting. It's interesting. But yeah. the nice thing about having two tines is you don't have that pesky middle tine to get out of alignment. True. <laughs> you know, you've got two tines here. You can align them fairly easily if they get out of alignment. Um, but this, this writes more like a stub where your horizontals are very thin and your downstrokes are very thick. Oh, like a music nib. Like a music nib. Well, and in this case, it's exactly, um, it's 90 degrees different than their cross music, which actually is broad downstrokes and horizontal, or uh, fine down and broad cross strokes. So if you're going to use this for music, you do have to rotate this to the or side. Or the page. Yeah, or the page. Oh, now see, I don't know which one I want. I have to have an extra fine because I, just, okay. I could so use that every every day. We can ring this one up. Um, uh, and the Zoom, I would never really get any you, use of it. Uh, we, we had a conversation about this nib once, I recall. Uh, remind me. We talked about Zoom, and you, and you said, well, do you have a Zoom nib? I said, well, I don't really like the Zoom nib. And you said, well, do you have one? I said, yes, I have like four of them. 
<laughs> he said, you have four, four nibs of something you don't like. Um, I said, yes. Uh, but I, I, after that point, I quickly, I, I turned the page. And uh, so I'm, I'm not going to get a Zoom myself. And the, the broad is very nice, but it doesn't put as much ink down as... Uh, no, no. As the broad is really a, a good everyday usable line width, I think. It, that's well, it I is actually. It, yeah. uh, I, my A didn't close. Um, I mean, your your D still closed up, still but D closed. But if I was only writing for myself, it doesn't matter at all. Um, so I'd have to decide: do I want the broad or do I want the music? Uh, maybe I need all three. You could get all three. Maybe I need all three. Um, we, well, we but I need up. them on 1911s. Well, we could put them on 19. Okay. Yeah. So those are the, those are the seven standard sailor nib sizes. And this was all um, one nib. That was that was, <laughs> that was all was one nib. Zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I've been doing that a while. So was that this one? Yeah, here? that looks like you went through the extra fine, fine, medium. No, no. Yeah, and and then this is where you know I, I I like this pen, the Zoom. Uh, sometimes when I'm when I'm working, if I'm working in the margins of something. Because then I can go in and I can say, okay, I can make a note. And if I don't have much room in the margin, I can just go in and say, you know, well, I can write my note, whatever, and it's you know, nice and small. And then if I want to underline something later, I can do that. Yeah, that's a nice So it's, um, it's not for everyone, but it's a fantastic No, in fact, note. I don't want it. But uh, I, I do like the music and the broad and the extra fine. Yeah. I would probably use the extra fine most of the time. But sometimes you just want to see your ink. This is this is so the music is so nice because this is so. It, it's a very nice, uh, reasonably thin. Yes. Yeah, you know, and you can you can get it to be fairly fine. But yeah, if you're going to use this for notes, you do have to rotate it 90 degrees because your your note heads go this way, and then you know. Yeah, so I'll take a, a extra five, <laughs> a, a, a broad, and a music. <laughs> okay, extra and we'll, we'll go a see broad which, and a music. We'll go see and which we'll, pens we ha I and, want them in, and, and we'll, we'll put them all in this pen for you. No, no, I need a nineteen eleven, and I don't have an extra fine yet. Okay, and and I like the extra fine. Uh, the first time I tried, first time I remember trying an extra fine by Sailor was a, a pen at, in Chicago. Yeah, at Anderson Pen Chicago. Lisa had it there. It was inked, and I was. I was blown away, really, because it is very extra fine. And it is for an extra fine. It is it's smooth. Pretty, it's very smooth. It yeah, very smooth. Yeah, and and this and this uh, this is now currently the finest nib they do make. Uh, Sailor did make a, a nib finer than this uh, reasonably recently. They they just discontinued it, but uh, they made a they made one even finer than this called the Saibitogi, which was a point like point two. It was very very fine, um, but. Uh, for now, extra fine is uh, is as extra fine as it gets for sailor, and that's plenty fun. Yes, I that's, think so. That's yeah. plenty. Yeah, um, yeah. You're not going to see much uh, sheening or anything like that. But no, but uh, uh, when I have an ink that I want to see, I, I want a, a pen that puts more ink on the paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I do that. Uh, well, that's why I really like the medium Parker Fifty One because it puts more ink on the paper. And, and we sh should mention too, or remind people that these are all hard nibs. They're not soft. They're not flexible. Uh, Sailor Sailor used to make some soft nibs like twenty some years ago, twenty thirty years ago. They no longer make them. Um, mm, yeah, I wouldn't even try to. And then, and then that's what if you, if you see some of the some of the older nibs now, they're they're starting to change these with the new design. They were marked H dash M for hard medium. Right. Uh, and and that's relatively and, recent. Isn't it? They've just recently, within the last, gosh, six, nine months, they've dropped the H. Oh, okay. Um, so all the new nibs are coming out. It's just medium. It's just fine. It's just extra fine. Yeah, it's not flexible. It's, it's not, not flexible. It's yeah. not springy. Yeah. You Don't should, push too hard. You definitely should never press too Don't hard too on, hard. A, on a sailor. You can do yeah, it once. All right. So but I get to go shopping. I get to go shopping. Yeah, I've been needing a 1911. Let's go see what you got. Okay. Um... Thank you very much. And this is always here at the store, right? Yeah, this is this is our tester set. Um, uh, thank you to Atoya for uh, uh, loaning us this. And uh, this is very nice. We, I can take we, the whole set. We have had, this is actually part of a larger set that has all the other Naganata Tokis and all the other special names. Special. 
Uh, but uh, this is on loan to us, and uh, we, we, we use it all the time. It's, I imagine. It's fantastic. Yeah. So. Because here you pick your nib, and then you pick. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Is pick my mm -hmm. pens. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's a whole lot easier than dipping every 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 pen in inventory. So, although you can do that too if you like. <laughs> do you have another joke? I, I I might. I might. Yeah. Did you hear that uh, Daffy Duck and uh, Elmer Fudd broke into a distillery? Oh uh, no! Did I didn't you hear, hear that? that? No. Did you hear that? It's crazy, right? Daffy says to Elmer, he "says Is this whiskey?" Yeah. Elmer says. <laughs> yes, but not of whiskey of robbing a bank. <laughs> I have to get that on my cell phone as your ringtone. <laughs> not of whiskey of robbing a bank. <laughs> Speaking of alcohol. Okay. Did you know, Mr. Anderson, that you can get drunk on toothpaste? <clears throat> Just mix it with vodka. <laughs> Next what? week. Uh, you're going to show me and everybody else how to repair a snorkel. Where do you do some snorkels? People, yeah. people are asking how to resack a snorkel, but it's more involved because there's more than just a sack in there. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I usually, you know, it's, it's... There is a sack. There is a sack, yes. Okay. There is a sack, uh, O-ring, point holder gasket. Um, there's also some mechanism. The snorkel tube. Yeah. 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 So, it, and it's a more complicated repair. It's not difficult, It's but it's time consuming. Special tools, maybe? Uh, there are a couple tools that are handy to have. Uh, handy yeah. to have. Yeah. Okay. Not, not like a vacuumatic where we need a special well, wrench, uh, but... Just like uh, the resacking that we did not too long ago of a lever filler or a lever filler, mm -hmm. I, I have never <laughs> seen the inside of a snorkel. Okay. So this will be completely new to me. Um, we'll see how many I can break. I, we're, not, we're not breaking any. <laughs> we, I said that. We. Me. How many I can break. Okay. Um, that's it. That's all I have. You have anything else? Awesome. No. All right. So we'll see you... Uh, for menu, what's the next menu? 15. 15, 15 I menu. think. Menu 15. That's Bye. Awesome. <laughs>